Five years ago, I set out to build the perfect adjustable wrench, a tool that I always wanted. And every version since has failed to some extent, until now. After countless redesigns and remaking parts over and over again, I think this one can work. The goal is simple, a wrench that instantly adjusts to any size, never slips, and ratchets like a socket. To the best of my knowledge, a wrench like this doesn't exist, and maybe there's a reason for that. Even the biggest tool brands have failed to build a worthy, adjustable ratcheting wrench. They're bulky, they're awkward, and they're just ugly. Now my wrench, it won't be perfect either, but that's okay. I'm building something for the tool lovers, not for practicality. A wrench that always fits, snaps cleanly onto a bolt, and ratchets seamlessly. Now, I still need to test this thing. As I pour more and more hours into prototypes, the more I worry that this design had some fundamental flaw. I mean, could this really replace a set of sockets? Well, I guess I was never gonna know unless I built it. When designing this adjustable wrench, there are a few critical things to get right. Most importantly was ensuring we had a firm grip on the bolt. If the wrench has too much slop, or only contacts a few faces, it'll round the bolt. Second, ease of use. Most adjustable wrenches use a worm gear, but it's slow, clunky, and it's known for jamming. I want something faster and more satisfying to use. When I started this design, I was a high school student, so it's no surprise that my first prototype barely worked. But the core idea wasn't so bad. A wrench that could contact all six sides of a bolt while still adjusting. But here's the problem. Typically, as more force is applied to the wrench, the adjustable mechanism is stressed, causing the bolt to slip. Unless you can somehow transfer the force acting on the wrench handle directly to the bolt surface. This way, as the torque on the wrench grows, so does the grip on the bolt, making slipping impossible, at least theoretically. To make this work, I need to somehow convert rotational motion to linear motion, clamping down on the bolt. So here's how I did it. Opposing plates and spring-loaded pins. As the blue plate rotates, the pins drive inward, tightening the grip. Add teeth to the pins, and suddenly we get something that resembles an adjustable wrench. But I still need the wrench to ratchet. To do that, I add a spring-loaded pawl. As the spiral plate moves forward, the pawl slips past the teeth freely. But when you reverse the motion, it catches immediately. Apply a force to the handle, and it's transferred through the blue plate and onto the bolt, increasing the grip on the bolt as more force is applied to the handle. To open the jaws to a larger bolt sizes, a switch jams the paw, locking the spiral plate to the handle. Now, a third spring-loaded plate opens up the jaws for it to snap right back into place. But there's one big oversight. I've designed a wrench that only tightens bolts. So to fix this, I just mirrored the design. Now, it's a double-sided wrench. One side will tighten and the other will loosen. And this leaves us with one more problem to consider. As the wrench clamps down, the reaction forces on the pins will want to twist the plate apart. To prevent that, I've added a central bushing that will lock both sides of the wrench. The bushing is critical. It distributes the load throughout the mechanism. The entire wrench relies on it being accurate. All right, that just about covers the core mechanism. Back when I started, I thought I'd just throw together a prototype, stick a label on it, and sell a million of them. It turns out it's really not that easy. Getting this wrench made required tons of hard to make small metal parts. I started by having all flat parts laser cut to save some time, but these laser cut surfaces were not nearly precise enough, which meant all critical surfaces still needed to be machined. Next was a center bushing. I turned the contact surfaces on the lathe, then milled the precise slots to lock them into the plates. These slots had to be lined up perfectly. If they didn't, the whole wrench would bind. And if the bushing fit wasn't just right, the whole assembly would just fall apart. Then came the wrench teeth cut from a solid chunk of steel. I was a little ambitious on my first attempt and tried to slot out each tooth. The aggressive cuts ended up causing a ton of chatter and every tooth came out super rough. So I scrapped that approach and started profiling each tooth individually. Way slower, but way better results. This way, I could also just flip the setup on its side, making the tap hole for the set screw without the need of separate fixturing. Even the pins were tricky to get right. They needed flats to interface with the plates, but my first few attempts ended up with a slight taper. That tiny error meant the teeth wouldn't stay aligned and the mechanism would just jam. So to fix it, I redesigned the old aluminum fixture and made it from steel instead. Dialed in the pin position and finally the accuracy was better than I could measure. Now, it's your work, right? Nope. 
still super sticky and won't even snap shut once opened. This led me down a painful road of endless tweaking and remaking parts, trying to just get the mechanism to work. Until there's only one place left to look, the plates. The CNC interpolation gave me a rough oval shape instead of a clean circle and these locating pinholes were just slightly misaligned, causing both the front and back plate to be offset, which was causing the entire mechanism to jam. So I scrapped everything and decided to redesign the fits to be turned on the lathe instead. This time, I was going to make sure I got it right. I used pins to register the part through the main slots. This way I could transfer the setup between the lathe and the mill without any added error. For this to work, the outer diameter needed to be just small enough to slide into the wrench handle, while the inner diameter needs to stay perfectly concentric while creating a precise interference fit with the center bushing. By this point, I've remade every part at least once, many multiple times. The pins are dialed in, the teeth are all finished, and the plates are finally accurate. It's late, I spent the last few hours overly perfecting parts. I can't push this off any longer. Let's see if this thing will actually work. And it works. Open it up, let it go, snaps right in the place. Just snaps right in the place. All right, we're almost there. Just gotta replace the plastic handle, add a ratcheting mechanism, and it'll be good to go. Which means back to the milling machines, this time with some help from the CNC. This always seems like less of an art than running the bridge port, but ends up being a huge time saver for complicated geometries. I can just sit back and watch it go to work. This is the satisfying part, removing all the excess stock material. Now it just needs some final touches. The parts are looking great. We'll pretend I did this all right the first time and we can finally put this design to the test. So will my wrench prototype eliminate my need for sockets? Well, it was looking great until I bent this pin. This is something I've glossed over up until this point. I was doing some testing off camera, put all my weight behind the wrench and bent one of the pins. I had done some math when I had first started that showed me at 100 foot pounds, there was no chance of bending or yielding any of these pins, but that's obviously not the case. One of the issues was I had spent so long staring at these parts in CAD where the mechanism was fixed in space, I never truly accounted for the bolt trying to pry the wrench jaws open. Based on the load applied to the handle, I had calculated the force on each pin, assuming the bolt and teeth were fixed, along with a few other misguided assumptions. This resulted in an out-of-plane bending stress on the pin that stayed safely underneath the yield stress of the chromoly steel. However, if we consider the reaction force from the hex bolt resisting the torque of the wrench and acting at these contact points, the bending stress on the pin is now significantly higher than I previously calculated explaining why these pins were bending. This is one of the advantages of a socket. As the hex bolt tries to rotate within the socket, you have the tensile strength of the material holding itself together. Now, I know where I went wrong, but I wasn't confident that I could easily fix it. So I ended up picking the project back up after taking a few months off. Taking a step back is often how I end up finding clarity. I think with smaller adjustable range and larger pins, I could get rid of this problem completely. But in the interest of avoiding redesigning the entire mechanism, there are a few small changes that could save me. For starters, I can shorten the length of the pins, reducing the leverage on the pins themselves, and replace the 4130 steel pins with ground 52100 hardened steel pins. I'll be very surprised if these pins fail. Something else will definitely break first. Now, in front of me, I have all the parts ready to assemble. Because of how difficult the main mechanism is to assemble, I've been doing it all off camera. Just know with all these press fit parts, constantly assembling and reassembling has been a huge pain, but it's not too bad from here. Here it is, the finished wrench. Just flip the switch forward, turn the center plate, and you have a wrench for any size bolt. One other cool thing you can do with this wrench, you can actually hold the teeth open with your thumb and then instantly close the wrench by flipping the switch. This spring force also gives me the ability to lock onto a bolt. 
With a socket wrench, you often need to apply pressure to stop it from falling off. With my design, it just snaps into place and holds itself there. You can even let go of the wrench and it'll still stick to the bolt. All right, time for a little testing. To start, I tapped a few holes in an aluminum block so I could try different bolt sizes. I began with a 3 8 bolt and the wrench performed exactly as expected, firmly locking onto the head and tightening down without slipping. Now the 5 16 bolt gave me a little trouble at first. The pulse friction was a little bit too high, which kept it from ratcheting smoothly, but that's an easy tweak for a future version. Once I did get the bolt threaded in, I could really crank down on it and it felt solid. And I was worried that the half inch bolt might be too large, but the wrench barely cleared it. And on the other end of the spectrum, I expected the smaller sizes to be harder to grip, yet I had no issue with the quarter 20 bolt. It threaded right in. And loosening bolts work just as well. I just need a way to remember which side tightens and which side loosens. One unexpected bonus I discovered was the ability to hand thread bolts using the center plate dial. Normally, you'd spin a bolt with your fingers before tightening down with a wrench. Here, the dial lets me replicate the same speed and control, but with the added grip and leverage of the center plate of the wrench. Of course, the design itself isn't without limitations. Recessed bolts were especially tough. The jaws are thicker than a standard socket, which makes clearance an issue. A simple chamfer would definitely help out here. Although the overall jaw depth and bulk of your head still limit access to tight spots, I'll need to come up with some sort of solution for future prototypes. So all in all, I'm happy with how this project turned out. If there's enough interest, I'll continue to improve the current design, but I do want to hear what people think about it. Is it just a gimmick or do you think you get some real use out of it? When designing a product, it's often better to have one strong use case rather than a mediocre do-it-all approach which I want to avoid. That's why if I ever made this wrench into a consumer product, my priority would be optimizing for user speed and efficiency. The wrench already saves a ton of time by eliminating the need to swap between sockets. Now imagine the addition of a cordless ratchet, allowing the wrench to quickly remove bolts once they've been cracked loose. Anyways, if you're still watching, thanks for making it to the end and comment if you have any other ideas or use cases for this design. I'm curious to see what people come up with.